is Matthew with ASPE. Today we are going to go over the different functions on the Rapid Tag machine, but most importantly, uh, focus on the components um, and what they do and how to use them properly. All right, so let's talk about the print head and what all these little functions do to help you have the best production possible. Uh, and after this, we will talk about the computer screen, but for now, let's focus here on this little orange knob. This is the stroke adjustment. Let's say that you are printing an image that is only one inch. Okay, so this image is only one inch, but you have a six inch stroke. You don't want to, to print this whole stroke because time is money and money is time and we want the best out of what we can get. So what do we do? We loosen this up. We're gonna go ahead and slide this down here. What this does, it's going to limit this print head to only about here, which of course uh, increases the speed and the time and that's what we're looking for in production. Next we will bring our attention to the front and the back of the print head. These are called flow controls. The one in the back will can control the speed of the squeegee. The one in the front will control the speed of the flood bar. So now you have these little lock bolts here by loosening them up and turning this clockwise will slow the speed down of your flood bar. By uh, pulling them counterclockwise, this will increase the speed. Same thing in the back. You're going to go ahead and loosen that up, and if you turn it to the left, I mean to the right, um, excuse me, this will uh, decrease the speed, and by the left, it will increase the speed. So we're going to go ahead and uh, show you the flood speed. So as you can see, this is the flood speed. I'm going to go ahead and speed it up. That's coming quick, right? You don't want it to go so fast, maybe, right? So we're going to go ahead and tighten this up. And now you see it's going slower. But we want our print stroke to be a little bit quicker. So we're going to turn it counterclockwise. And we've got a slightly quicker stroke, as you can see. Now this is adjusted to uh, uh, your needs, of course. But for knowledge's sake, once you have them to the place that you want them, go ahead and lock these up. Make sure it stays exactly where you want it to be. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and talk about the micro adjusting knobs and how to use them. First things first, we're gonna loosen the two in the front. Okay, go ahead and turn it counterclockwise. Same thing as the ones in the back. Counterclockwise and counterclockwise. So, our focus is now here on these two front um, adjuster knobs, micro adjusting knobs. By adjusting them both to the right, we'll bring the screen slightly forward. Okay, now focusing on the right, if you turn this one just to the right, it will pivot the screen slightly to your left. Now adjusting your left micro adjusting knob to the right, it will also adjust it to the right. Now these are slight fracture movements that are important for registration. Last but not least, you have this little guy right here. By turning this uh, to the left and also to the right, it will create a uh, left and right movement, which is linear, so it will be bringing it uh, the focus, like I said, left to the right. And once you have these uh, in place, then of course, lock your micro adjusting locks into place. Make sure everything is nice and tight because we want to keep that registration exactly where it is. Okay guys, next we will be going over placing the screen into the print head. Uh, first things first, you want to make sure the toggle switch is up for the index. Make sure it's locked into place. Then we are going to lower the uh, print head down uh, to place our screen in here. Uh, keep note, most of our clients like to draw a line across the palette. This is an indicator of where you, you will be uh, placing the shirt uh, each time to get a consistent print. Uh, from here, you'll go ahead and place the screen in there. Uh, let's say the shirt is here, the line is there. You kind of have a visual on where you want it to be. Once you have it in the spot where you say, you know what? This is where uh, I want the print to be on the shirt every time. You're going to go ahead and lock it into place with the pneumatic screen locks. Flick the toggle up. Uh, if you need to, you can go ahead and lock this manually if you know uh, you will be running all night and uh, you, you'll probably have to turn the machine off and you don't want to uh, uh, lose the screen here because when the machine turns off, the pneumatics come up and your, your screen could be loose, but by keeping these manually, you're gonna keep it nice and tight and you'll be ready for the next morning. All right guys, so now that we have the screen installed, uh, we're gonna go ahead and install the flood bar and the squeegee. 
Um, first things first, on your touch screen, you want to bring the print head out, uh, bringing it nice and forward. If you look at the back of the print head here, you're going to go ahead and loosen this black knob, give it a twist, you may have to push it in a little bit, kind of give it a little space. You're going to go ahead and take your flood bar, position it between the two pieces of metal here, and you want a nice hair length between the screen and the flood bar itself. Let's go ahead and get it there. Go ahead and wiggle it into position, and now we are ready to flood. When installing the squeegee, you see here there is a small key ring. You're going to go ahead and pull this out. There is a slot in the squeegee block. You will go ahead and fit the squeegee holder into this block using your fingers in the back of the squeegee while pressing up. Give it a little wiggle, make sure that it, it locks into place. And now you're ready to print. So we're gonna go ahead and focus on the squeegee angle. Uh, here you will need a 532nd Allen key. Um, slightly turn it to the left, um, loosen it up just a bit, not to where it's kind of wiggling around, um, but just enough where you can have both hands and slightly move it forward. Once you have it into position, you will hold the squeegee. Go ahead and tighten it up, turning it clockwise. Um, make sure you get both sides ni nice and tight. You want to make sure it's nice and firmly tight just because of the case that uh, you will be printing thousands, maybe hundreds of prints, and that thing can move over time. So this is how we uh, adjust the squeegee angle. Okay, while approaching the off contact and the way to uh, do it correctly, there will be four uh, acorn nuts total, two on each side, the left and the right. You'll need a 7 16 wrench. You'll go ahead and loosen these properly, not enough to where it falls, but enough to where you have enough movement uh, and control of the, uh, of the holders here. Uh, you will loosen all four of these. Uh, let's say you're printing a koozie, you will go ahead and press it, your screen down where it's sitting just above the koozie, um, and you will tighten these acorn nuts up and make sure you use the tool to tighten it up properly on each side and your off contact is set. Okay, so these are the hoodie arms. Uh, the purpose of the hoodie arms is to, of course, tuck in the hoodie or tuck in the straps of a bag. This will come standard on all rapid tag machines from our uh, LP1, 2, 3, and 4 and the LP2 XLs. Um, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate me putting a hoodie on here. I may not look the best because, as you can tell, I am not someone in a production setting, but go ahead and put it down. You tuck it down in place. Uh, same thing as the bag. You would place the bag, tuck in the straps. As you can see, there is enough room to uh, uh, clear the screen. Uh, Offloading is also very easy. Once again, bringing it forward, tucking it down. Are you ready to print a hoodie? Okay guys, so this right here is your limit switch. This is what will uh, tell your uh, machine to stop in its proper position. Uh, we will go over maintenance um, a little bit more down the line uh, in another video. Alright, so if you look below here, you're going to see a part sensor. purpose of the part sensor is to make sure that your machine will only print when there is a product on the pallet. So when a t-shirt passes by the sensor, you will see this red light here in the back this will indicate there is a product in place and it will print on that pallet. Uh, you need to make sure that this uh, sensor is um, aimed in between the uh, pallet right in front of the print head. So of course in this area here um, and then you'll be able to get an efficient uh, print and pass each time. Uh, also one more thing guys, uh, you can adjust the uh, reading distance or range if you will uh, with a very tiny screw in the back. Uh, you probably need one of those little glasses screws to go ahead and turn it. Um, slightly turning it to the uh, left will uh, decrease the range. Slightly uh, turning it to the right will increase the range. Uh, also, if you have a product that's not hanging off of the pallet, uh, you may need to adjust it. So if that is the case, give us a call and uh, we can help uh, set you up with what you need uh, to print that product in place. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the registration block. This is what is going to uh, uh, make sure that your images are registered. You're going to go ahead and push home here. It should bring your pallets right under the print head. Uh, once you're there, you can see it's nice and locked. You can have this switch here. If you look down below, you'll see the block going up and down. This um, is the indicator that it will be locked into place. Bringing it down will free the index, which will allow you to uh, clean the screen or set up a job if you need to be. Flash gears, 300 watts to the sides, 500 watts in the middle, 
Make sure to check your box here. It should say right there 500 or 300 watt. The first thing I want you to do is flip the index switch, make sure it's locked into place. Um, this will uh, allow you to see exactly where your flash screen needs to be, positioning right over the pallet. Uh, from here, there is an adjustment that I like to keep in mind, whether your ink is sensitive, your product is sensitive to flammability, or your uh, product is maybe thick and you need to raise it. Loosen up these bolts here, you can raise it up. Uh, and you can see on top here, you have these little knobs, you can go ahead and twist them. This allows you to position the flash gear further out or slightly further in, whatever your needs are for that job. All right, last but not least, I want you guys to always check your bulbs. The uh, purpose of this is, let's say you have an image, uh, partial of the image, whether it's left or right, if a bulb is out, may not be fully cured, so it's always best to, to kind of look under there and make sure that everything is on uh, and you don't have a burnt bulb. All right guys, now that we've gone over all the different functions on the outside of the Rapid Tag machine, we're gonna bring our focus here to the computer screen. First things first, go ahead and turn your uh, on switch lever uh, clockwise. We're gonna wait for the, uh, the screen to pop on here. And then once it's on, we're gonna go ahead and uh, teach you guys uh, what to do from here. You're gonna look at this bottom row, this yellow button here is the home button. This will uh, put your machine into indexing position. You want to make sure that this lock here um, is up. This is the uh, index block. We'll make sure that everything is proper. Now we will go ahead and start. Begin the indexing process. All right, now focusing on the setup, guys. We're going to go ahead and uh, push index. Go to setup. And we're going to start with the, uh, the uh, speed and the dwell time. The speed is how fast the pallets will rotate to each section. The dwell is how long it will sit at that uh, point. Uh, let's start with the speed. Right now it's at 50 hertz. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, bring it down to uh, slow the speed down for each station. Now this will also depend on your uh, production guy. He will adjust it to his needs and what suits his needs in speed. So as you can see, this is very slow, but for demonstration purposes, you can see how you can adjust the speed. We're gonna bring it back up to 50, okay? Now we're gonna focus on dwell. So as you can see, it stops at each station for one second. One. Now that's after the flash gears turn off. One. It's one second. We're gonna go ahead and just put one on here just so you can see how fast this thing will go by adjusting your dwell time. Enter. As you can see, it's barely even stopping after the flash gears are off. So these are the functions of your speed and your dwell time. Once again, this is all dependent on your production guy uh, where he can make it suitable for his needs and you can get the most out of your Rapid Tag machine production. All right guys, so we're focusing on these uh, four um, windows right here. The H1 stands for head one. C1 stands for cure one, so flash cure. H2 is head two. Uh, C2 is cure station uh, number two. So when you click this here, this will bring you to head one and head two. The one stands for how many strokes you will uh, be doing on your head one. Uh, you have the option of going up to nine. Let's say that you wanna do two strokes. You would just go ahead and push two here and enter. Same thing with head two. Let's go back, we'll push auto to go back. Now let's focus on the flash cures. Click C1. This brings you to uh, cure one and cure station two. Now you see this is a tenth of a second. So right now, this is on for one second. Um, majority of the times you may be in the range of, let's say, um, 18, so 18, which would be 1.8 second, two, oops, two five, which is 2.5 seconds. This is what I see, which is a standard for uh, most prints. So let's go ahead and get both of these adjusted to two five. Once again, that is two seconds and 2.5 seconds. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, focus on manual mode here. Bottom right, manual. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click the upper left head one for demonstration purposes. Um, the uh, purpose of this is to show you how to bring the uh, print head uh, in and out. As you see, in and out. So um, out, bring it forward, in should bring it in, and then also up and down. So down, of course, and up. 
All right, guys, thank you for watching our video. Stay tuned until next week, and we will show you how to set up a job and uh, share a few tips and tricks of our own on how to uh, get the most out of your rapid tag machine. Stay tuned. Thank you very much.